Okay, we are delighted to introduce our alumni speaker for today's talk, Akil Ahmed, who will be sharing his insights into what it takes to succeed in the media industry. Today's event is also part of the University of Westminster's World in Westminster Festival celebration. Since completing his film, video and photographic arts BA at Westminster in 1992, Akil has become a successful media consultant with over 30 years experience in the industry. After graduating from Westminster, he started working TV where he rose at the executive level to become Head of Commissioning and Head of Religion and Ethics at the BBC. His commissions include many award-winning and high-profile projects. Akil is currently a self-employed media consultant to various media companies, a non-executive director at several regulators and a professor of media at the University of Bolton. During this talk, Aki will leverage his diverse experience in the media industry to reflect on how the sector and its workforce has changed over the years and to identify challenges newcomers might find navigating the industry. This talk will aim to pass on advice to anyone hoping to take their first steps in the media industry and deliver some clear takeaway messages on how you can succeed and progress in this sector. I graduated from the University of Westminster in 1992. I did a degree in what in those days was called photography, film and video. And I think the nearest course that they have really, I think it's contemporary media practice at the university right now. Before all of that, I went to art school originally and I studied to be a graphic designer. And while I was studying graphic design, I discovered a little bit of a love for photography and a bit an early days of video and ended up at West Minster. I graduated and I actually got a job straight away. So I think I'd always been quite commercially orientated. And then I think in my second year at university, I did a work experience, but on a Channel 4 production. It was actually via one of the lecturers. I'd made a film about Iraq's invasion of Kuwait. I made about two or three little films. I had a little bit of an obsession with it in the beginning of my second year. And I uh, got to do this work experience and it was for a couple of weeks and they kind of like liked me in the office. And so they asked the university if I could stay on and the university allowed me to spend two months there at this production company working on a couple of shows. And that gave me a taste of what factual television was all about. And by the time I'd got to that end of my second year, I then realized that's what I want to do. So I spent the first year and the beginning of the second year not knowing what the hell I was going to do like most students, having rough ideas, swinging from one thing to another. I'd gone to university thinking I was going to be the next Donald McCullin, a great war photographer. And then by the time I got to the second year, I'd realised that actually I wasn't good enough to be a photographer. And what I really wanted to do was make TV programmes, factual TV programmes. Well, that's interesting. So I do communications rather than PR, but it's in, in a similar world. And I know some PR people and there are small companies and there are big companies. One, I suppose it depends on what you studied. If I was to say wanted to be a journalist, I should be writing newspaper articles. I should be writing magazine articles. I should be writing intros to the news or for TV, for radio, whatever it may be. I want that job. So I need to be able to show people this is what I can do. And with the PR agencies, so I know big and small. So I have to be honest with you, some of the small guys are better because they will probably say, you on or give you a bit of a break or whatever they tend to be one or two or three man bands or woman bands these days they work from home and they just hire people as and when they need them and that's in the world of pr and comms and then there are the big companies they're only going to take on people who are very experienced so i would say probably go for the smaller company and say to them that you're willing just to do some work experience for a few weeks uh, at no cost that's what i would do because my experience of the bigger pr companies from a purely work basis they tend to go after people who are very experienced and that experience normally comes from working for smaller agencies or joining on productions or most of these big production PR companies, communication companies often may have a kind of training scheme but they generally go for people who've done something at Oxford or Cambridge or something like that. It's a very elitist world in that sense at the high end. It's the more commercial end that I think you need to look at the smaller more boutique places they're more likely to give you a go. going to be really hard when you think of like the editorial side. I think it's less hard or it's actually quite common for people to be working in the more technical side of broadcasting, whether it be digital websites, digital, those kind of things. You find people from India, mainly from India, places like that, working in that particular territory. Now, when you're talking about the editorial side, I think it's going to be quite hard. There's no getting around. I don't know why. It's going to be hard. The only way you're going to beat anybody is if you're right. It goes back to that point I made about your idea, the access, that it's something that's really, really special. That's what you've got to come up with. 
with because for instance you've got to just remember whoever it is has got to sponsor you and part of the sponsorship is they've got to be able to show that what you bring they can get from someone already in this country that's the difficulty Yeah, I mean, I would always say to people, read Broadcast Magazine. I'm not sponsored by them, but I would say read Broadcast Magazine. Keep up to date with it. I also am a member of RT, the Royal Television Society, and I'm a member of BAFTA. BAFTA is very expensive and very hard to get into, so you don't have to worry about that now. But I would recommend all of you join the Royal Television Society. They do have a student package, and it's worth it because you then get access to the sessions that they put on, whether it's digitally or face-to-face. The Royal Television Society, they have regional offices as well as the national office. It's a place where you can go and listen to people give talks and seminars and they publish things and they're up to date. So I would say broadcast, Royal Television Society, those two are must have. And then the final thing as well, I would say is get onto the Ofcom website, get in touch with Ofcom, read what they're doing because they're doing some fantastic work on audience research, on research around digital poverty and technology and all of those things. (music)